Welcome to 19th Street North and Central Avenue in St. Petersburg, Florida. The most photographed woman in world history, Miss Marilyn Monroe, is painted upon the old Playhouse Theater. Spring 1961, Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio spent eight days here in the Tampa Bay area. Today I'm going to tell you just why and show you some photographs and the locations where those photographs were taken, those locations we will see today. Thanks for joining me everyone. I am Tampa Jay, and there is much ahead. We begin today at Crescent Lake Park along 5th Street North, here in Northeast St. Petersburg. This park is home to a beautiful and gigantic banyan tree. Actually, St. Petersburg is full of them. They have quite a few of these banyan trees sitting down along Tampa Bay and downtown. There's also a beautiful pathway around this lake for some good exercise, and it is gorgeous out here this morning. Okay, let's cut to the chase. You're probably asking yourself, what is he doing out here in this park, and what does it have to do with Marilyn Monroe? Well, we're here because of that water tower you see out there across the lake, that 97-year-old water tower to be precise. Upon doing research, I found this old photograph of Marilyn Monroe standing in front of this exact water tower back in 1961. The water tower sits in front of a baseball field utilized by the New York Yankees for their spring training practices. And coaching that day was Joe DiMaggio. Marilyn Monroe's ex-husband, which she had just joined here in St. Petersburg after flying in with him after he rescued her from the psychiatric hospital in New York City. And these are the photographs that are going to help shape today's journey. Next stop, Hug and Stangle Baseball Complex, where the New York Yankees used to train. This street north quickly changes to brick fading us in to 1961. Up close to that water tower. It was constructed in 1923, and it sat here just before this baseball stadium was constructed, the former home, spring training home, practice home of the New York Yankees. And it was here that Joe DiMaggio, formerly a Yankee, and then a batting coach, was coaching a practice out here in 1961 as Marilyn Monroe stayed beyond the fence here and watched. And there are photographs of that day. And we're gonna find exactly where those photographs were taken. Swing bat about a swing bat about a swing. If you take a look at this old photograph, notice the steps behind Joe there. Way down in the corner you see a pole and I believe this is the same spot where they were getting into the car. If you look over to the right, there's a house just behind them along 5th Street North. The fence is long gone, but there is a house over there and it matches up here today. And this would have been the spot where Marilyn and Joe would have gotten into that car. The steps there, that house there, the fence there. And if you see that fence used to take a turn right there, no longer there, but a good indication where the park starts where it used to be but wow Marilyn Monroe Joe DiMaggio right here in this very spot here's just a shot looking the other way there's the steps there to the right 1320 5th Street North St. Petersburg right here in front of the old water tower if you want to take a photo where Marilyn Monroe once stood get your cameras ready selfie time. In front of the building just to the right of the ballpark are these two markers. This one commemorates Charles Dillon Casey Stangle, one of baseball's most popular and widely known figures who as manager of the New York Yankees won 10 American League pennants in 12 years, helping to make the Sunshine City the spring training capital of the world, and who now has returned as manager of the New York Mets 
This plaque is gratefully and affectionately dedicated. And there you go. There is where this ballpark gets its name and why the Yankees play here. Also, Miller J. Huggins, 1878 to 1929, has a memorial in tribute to an outstanding sportsman and a splendid character who as manager of the New York Yankees and resident resident of the city contributed to its fame and the betterment of baseball. The citizens of St. Petersburg dedicated this ground, which will forever shall be known as Miller Huggins Field. So it looks like it became Stangle Huggins Field eventually. So the Yankees practice here, but their spring training home was at Al Lang Stadium in downtown St. Petersburg, which is still there today. It's being utilized by the soccer team, the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Long before Steinbrenner Field, or formerly Legends Field, was the home of the New York Yankees over in Tampa, they called this home. And also calling this ballpark home was the St. Louis Cardinals. They all played ball and practice out here. Just a fun fact for you sports fans out there. So now I'm standing beyond right field, back into Crescent Lake Park, so I can match up that photograph. It looks like it was taken from the outfield. Hello there, my friends. How's the weather today? Just taking a walk in the park? Yeah? Well, me too. Me too. Well, I'm getting closer to where I think that photograph was taken of Maryland and the water tower. And today here, out in beyond left field is a dog park. And there's the water tower. We're getting close. Here's a few photos of Maryland that day watching the ball practice. I found these from a source online. As you can see, she's wearing the same outfit. And in her hand, she has a cup of coffee, the same cup of coffee that you see her in the same photograph of the one with the water tower in the background. And in the middle, she's watching Joe coaching the practice there behind the, behind the fence. I am now inside the dog park, and this is the vicinity of which I think the photograph was taken. 1961, 2020. Wow. Miss Norma Jean stood right here. Very awesome. Here are the batting cages today. And looking at the photos, I'm gonna say that they were in the same vicinity back in 1961. And check out Maryland in the background watching Joe coach the practice. Joe was the batting coach. As we know, Joe DiMaggio was one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Won nine World Series championships with the New York Yankees. His whole career spent with the Yankees. He paused it for a few years because he served in the Army during World War II and then came back and finished his career and retired just a, a year or two before he married Marilyn, which was in 1954. Although their wedding, or their marriage, only lasted nine months, they were friends for life. And it is said that they fell back in love here in the Tampa Bay area back in 1961. Oh my gosh, look what I found on the fence. Could those be? Marilyn Monroe's glasses still here? Hey. They kind of look the same. Think of all the Yankee legends that played upon this field. Right now I'm thinking of Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio, wow, Yogi Berra, the list can go on. I brought my ball and glove today. I was hoping to get out on the field, but it does say no trespassing. Shucks. You know, it was during the days that Joe DiMaggio played when America and the world was faced with one of the most horrible times in history, World War II. And before we entered the war, America deemed baseball America's pastime. And that's the whole reason why they began doing night games, it's because at night people wanted to escape from reality, from the horrible things that were going on in the world. They wanted to watch baseball. And that's why when the men went away during World War II, most of the baseball players went to war. And that's why the women's league started. 
It truly was America's pastime. Besides reading the horrible news in the papers, you could always escape to the ballpark. I used to play it myself, I'm not that good, but I always loved baseball. Such a great game to play, so relaxing and therapeutic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to North Reddington Beach at the Tides Beach Club. And this is where Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio stayed during that eight day duration back in 1961. The beach club and resort is still here. Although much has changed, it is still here. Now the Tides Resort is a private beach resort and we cannot go inside. However, there is a public beach access that runs right next to the resort which will grant us access to behind the resort out on the beach where we can try to find the locations of where some of those photographs of Marilyn and Joe were taken. I'd like to pause right now and head a little further up the street here on Golf Boulevard up to where Marilyn and Joe used to dine in the evening during that stay. We're just a couple years too late, but once stood here behind me was the Winehouse restaurant where Marilyn and Joe dined a few times during their stay here at Reddington Beach. It was first the Winehouse restaurant, then the wine cellar, and then it was something after that, but that building was torn down a couple years ago, and now here on the block of 173rd and Golf Boulevard is a new construction site. Here's an old photo of the wine cellar restaurant a few years before it closed. And here is about the same location the photograph was taken today. You can definitely make out the bus stop and the roadside there on the corner. If I had to guess, Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio would have pulled up in the limousine about right there where the entrance was. Kind of like where my car is parked right now. But yeah, that is where they ate back in 1961. Jolton, Joe, and Marilyn. Notice the private property signs to the left. That is Tide Beach Resort. But this is a public access to the Gulf of Mexico. And to put things into better perspective, we are halfway between St. Pete Beach and Clearwater Beach. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Gulf of Mexico. The breeze feels very nice out here. It's very warm. That breeze is perfect. At the time of Marilyn and Joe's stay here at the Tide Resort, it was known as America's longest beach resort. And today it's still quite long. I believe even that last building down there is part of the resort. But we're gonna walk along the stretch of beach here. I should have left my shoes in the car. <laughs> I am now standing between the Gulf of Mexico and the Tides Beach Club. And it is said that Joe and Marilyn stayed on the top floor and they had a balcony view of the Gulf of Mexico. When word got out that they were staying here, thousands of kids flocked to this stretch of beach and they threw up baseballs to Joe and Marilyn and had them signed and Joe threw them back down. They slept in separate rooms, um, it is said, that they had rooms from across the hallway from each other. But also it is said that they were seen kissing and holding hands and walking down the beach here. This stretch of beach right here in front of the resort. Now some of the most iconic photographs from that stay were taken right here. It is hard to match it up because in the photos all you see is beach and the old hotel. But it was somewhere here in this vicinity. Here's a photo of Marilyn and Joe sitting beneath this blue cabana. Hard to tell it was blue, but I read that it was blue. But there are cabanas here today, right here in the same vicinity. Before doing research for this video, I always heard that Joe and Marilyn's relationship and marriage wasn't the best. I mean, they got a divorce. But I learned that they kept in contact, and doing research for this video educated me that they both dearly cared for each other. The fact that Joe flew all the way to New York after getting a phone call, Marilyn's only phone call from the psychiatric ward, the fact that he went there and broke her out and brought her down to Florida to help her escape 
knowing Marilyn's past, her childhood, she dealt with neglect and abuse, and you know, Hollywood was cruel back in the day, and they typecasted her, you know, she was the dumb blonde, but she was so much more than that. She loved to read, she was very educated, although they both dropped out of school in the 10th grade, both of them had a sharp head on them and quite a legacy as we as we know. But I do believe they really loved each other and it was those moments here on this beach that helped them rekindle the flame. Accounts of them holding hands and kissing and the photos. I mean you saw the photos today. It looks like it looks like they're in love. And when Joe DiMaggio learned of Marilyn's death in 1962, he was devastated. And he said that he, his plan was to ask her to remarry him. And their relationship wasn't perfect. I've, I've heard all the stories. But, you know, whose who's relationship, whose marriage is entirely perfect? I think they were just two people that really loved each other and just couldn't make it work. When Marilyn died, Joe sent flowers to Marilyn's grave three times a month for 20 years. And I think... I think he actually, I think she, I think he actually set it up for where there is to be a rose placed upon her grave until the end of time. And Joe passed away in 1999, actually here in Florida on Hollywood Beach. And it is said that upon his deathbed, one of the last things he talked about was now that he could go home and see Marilyn again in heaven. You know, what a tragic story. I, I do wish this couple could have seen better days. And of course, we all know Marilyn died in 1962 of an overdose. Uh, I think only 37 years old. Like Elton John said, the candle blew out long before the legend ever did. But I really enjoyed coming out here and learning that story and to think that Marilyn and Joe rekindled the flame right here in the Tampa Bay area was so cool to me. And I just had to share it with you guys. And by doing so, I learned a lot of cool history about Marilyn Monroe in Tampa Bay. She, it wasn't her only time here in 1961. There was other times when Joe was playing for the Yankees. But this is the story today. The story of Jolt and Joe and the most photographed and most beautiful woman in the world at the time. Marilyn Monroe. Wow, right here on, on the beach. This is so cool. And if you like this video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this type of history in Tampa Bay, there is lots of Yankee history right here in this area. Lots of Marilyn Monroe history. All kinds of interesting stories that needs to be told and put into video and documented. And I look forward to covering that more on this channel in the much ahead. But if you like this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. I am Tampa J. There's much ahead. Meaning, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Have a nice day. Man, it's beautiful out here. It's hot, too. Maybe I'll jump in. You've heard me say before, my favorite place to be is in nature. My favorite place to be in nature is at the beach.